It's the most exotic event of the season. The Luge World Cup on a natural track is back in Moscow. Traditionally held at the city's most picturesque location, Vorobievi Gori, this competition is different from any other classic European race. Its unique atmosphere evokes very special emotions. It's very important for us. The international Luge family always like to come to big cities. We prefer always to come to Moscow too because there is a wonderful organization, a big, big federation here in, R in Russia. And so great sports uh, people, athletes, and so we would like to come. It's a great, great uh, feeling here in the city of Moscow to have our sports. It's very important to host World Cups in big metropolises, especially in such a beautiful city as Moscow, in the very center of Russia's capital. It is important for the popularization of this sport. More people can come and watch it. Yeah, it's very nice here in Moscow, in the city. In Italy, we drive only on little, small, or only on small um, villages, and here in the city, and yeah, it's very nice here. I like it, and I think it's important if we come here to Moscow in these big cities, and yeah, you can see that you can do our sports everywhere you want. In natural track luge, athletes race down ice located on natural slopes. Here in Moscow, they find themselves in rather unusual conditions. First of all, they find themselves in the middle of a huge city instead of at a traditional cozy European village. And secondly, the track is quite different from the standard natural track. Obviously, before selecting this location to build our natural track, we scanned the entire city of Moscow in search of appropriate natural slopes. But there were just none better than this one right here where we are. The track here in uh, Moscow is really difficult because it's very pumpy and so it's uh, a big challenge for us because uh, in our, on our tracks it's very flat and uh, so I think it's really difficult for us and I think the Russian team is favorite here but I'll do my best. It's always a little bit surprise here because if you find the right material so this is very different and the, the, the ice is very different than the tracks in Europe. No, no, it should be different and so this is one of the points we like to come to here because it's a short trek but it's a very difficult trek and uh, it should be different to many other treks in, in Europe and in the world. Usually natural tracks are about 800 meters long but Moscow's track is only 520 meters. The Russian track is much shorter and it's unforgiving. If you touch the wall and lose time, it's nearly impossible to regain it later. Losers have to tackle the curves perfectly if they hope to stand on the podium. It's true, because uh, the track is so short, uh, one minor mistake can change the whole uh, race for you. So it's very important to race as clean as possible, um, be on the points where to steer in. Uh, and make no mistakes at all. Ah, I like this kind of track very much. It's uh, more fun and more difficult and it's um, more challenging than the normal tracks we have in Italy and Austria. The athletes have two time trial runs to familiarize themselves with all the curves of the track. They all face some problems, but by the end of the day, they're able to identify the most important and difficult segments of this track here in Moscow. Yeah, for sure. It's the first corner. It's the this is a very important corner, and then uh, in the middle part is very flat, and then you need uh, a lot of speed from the before the flat part. So also this corner is important. I think it's the second corner because you have to go very early, and uh, I'm not very good at going early. And for me, this is the diff most difficult track, but I'll do that. It's the lower corner where you need to brake. You have to brake, then make a sharp turn and make it out at good speed, because there is a flat part after that and then the finish line. The trial run showed that many athletes hit the wall right there. And here's an example of why natural track luge is considered an extreme sport. This is the world champion and current World Cup leader Italian loser Alex Gruber doing his first trial run. This crash left a noticeable bruise on his nose. And the last corner, so it was new for us. Uh, we didn't know how to brake or how much. 
and I tried to, to push a little, little bit and then I crashed into the wall. The problem was that there was broken the ice so in the underground and then the, my, my, my leg was stopped because of the ice and I made a front flip so that was not so really good but it was a good stunt for Instagram, yeah. No, but uh, I was really lucky on that crash because I didn't hurt that much, some small injuries, but all in all, I had a lot of luck. Despite all that, Alex Gruber won the first official run, and in the second final run, he is the last one to race. That gives him the advantage of knowing the results of all his rivals, including the time of Thomas Kammerlander, who shares the overall lead in the World Cup with the Italian. Kammerlander's first run was mediocre, giving him only the fourth best time, but his final attempt is phenomenal, topping his time by almost a second. The sum of his two runs, one minute 800s, puts Thomas in the lead. Next on the ice in the Moscow track is another Austrian athlete, Florian Glatzel. The first run solidly put him in second place, but this is not enough to challenge the turbo speed of Thomas Kammerlander. Glatzel loses precious time early in the race, and after one of the turns, he almost loses control of his luge. The remaining track is not long enough to regain his lost seconds. Glatzel finishes in second behind his teammate and secures himself a medal. However, what is it going to be, silver or bronze? All eyes are on Alex Gruber's final run now. He definitely wants nothing but a victory. The previous day he was the fastest. However, in order to beat Kamalander's current time, he has to pull off something extraordinary and risky. It does not quite work out. Yeah, for me it was difficult. I had a big mistake in the first corner. And this is really a short track and there you can't make your mistakes because there are other good athletes which will be faster. So I had a mistake in the first corner and also if you know that you, you, you drive a little bit different, maybe you risk at the second corner a little bit more, that was also not so good. Yeah, it, all in all, it was a bad run. In this run, Gruber comes in seventh, but the sum of his two runs is good enough to keep him on the podium. In the end, Thomas Kammerlander wins his second consecutive gold this season. Gruber comes second and Glatzel takes the bronze medal. The best Russian athlete, Alexander Igorov, comes in sixth place. His teammate, Alexei Martyanov, is right behind him. The first two female World Cup podiums this season were identical. Both times, Tina Unterberger claimed bronze, but in Moscow she is just not able to figure out the perfect line on the track. The Austrian loser does not hide her frustration. The first runs determine the medal contenders quite clearly. The time gaps were significant. To move up the leaderboard, you have to either noticeably improve your result or hope for your rivals to make a big mistake. Greta Pingera, the current overall world champion, has two silver medals in a row this season. She celebrated her 24th birthday here in Moscow, but no one handed her any presents on the track. She came third in the first run and improves by one-tenth of a second in the second. However, the others will also try to improve their results. Greta's final result is 1 minute 1 second 32 hundredths. Next, it's Ekaterina Lavrantieva's time to shine. The 37-year-old is one of the most decorated women in this sport. Her rivals call her the queen of the track. 
Ekaterina won four world championships and more than 10 overall World Cups. Not so long ago, she gave birth to twin boys and after returning to the track from her maternity leave, she broke her leg and it took quite a while to recover. Lavrantieva's result in Moscow is a real breakthrough for her, especially after two recent fifth places in World Cup. Her lead on Greta Pinguera is 16 hundredths and this secures her the silver medal. There's one athlete left and her name is Evelyn Lantala. The Italian loser races down the track to prove yet another time that this season she has no competition. Every time she takes the lead right from the start and then her advantage just keeps growing and growing. She tackles this track without a single mistake, always maneuvering her luge through the corners in the fastest manner possible. Lantaller finishes both runs a half a second ahead of her nearest contender, effortlessly winning her third World Cup gold this season. Pingera comes third and Lavrantieva gets silver, which is a serious achievement for her. I didn't do very well in the last two events, and today it took a lot of nerve to stay in second place, but I did it. I kept improving little by little, and this result makes me very happy. The men's doubles hit the ice at the end of the Moscow tournament. Warm weather has affected the quality of the track, so the organizers had decided that a single run determines the winners. This gives a chance of an upset win to all the underdogs and opens the door for surprises. The first Russian pair, Stanislav Kovshik and Ilya Tarasov, finished with a solid 31-15. Nobody was that fast during the trial runs. But it is unclear what this result means because usually the following contenders do a little bit better. The second Russian pair is the very experienced World Cup medalists Alexander Igorov and Peter Popov. They are slower at the start, which means bad news on the short Moscow track here. There is almost no way for them to catch up. You have to be on the razor's edge between maximum speed and extreme caution not to make any more mistakes. At the finish line, Igorov and Popov are 27 hundredths behind their teammates. However, the leading team always goes last. The Italian pair Patrick Pigneta and Florian Clara are the seven-time overall World Cup winners and have been dominating the double luge scene for many years and predictably are on top of the leaderboard in this race. At the trial runs, they were the fastest pair, consistently improving their results, so everyone expected them to give the perfect run and take the gold. Surprisingly, though, they make several mistakes and lose more than three-tenths of a second to the leaders, finishing with only a bronze. Two Russian pairs are faster this time. Igorov and Popov win the silver, and a sensational gold goes to Stanislav Kovshik and Ilya Tarasov. It is interesting to note that Kovshik is married to Ekaterina Lavrantieva and admits that she is a source of very valuable advice for him. Sadochnikov, 
Certainly, she gives me a lot of advice on how to tackle the corners, and her medal inspired us to win. You cannot make any mistakes here. Right from the start, you have to go at full speed. We managed to go through the entire track almost perfectly and flawlessly, hence the result. It's a great pleasure for us, as this is our first medal. We were never on the World Cup podium before, and winning this gold here in Moscow with all the support and quality organization is especially precious. The World Cup organizers in Moscow have extended the program far beyond the mere luge competitions. They provide entertainment on a big stage located in the middle of the famous viewpoint at Vorbyevi Gori between the races. Among other things, all spectators can participate in the impressive daily draw with a valuable motorcycle and other extreme sports equipment prizes by just dropping a ticket in the lottery box. And the Luge World Cup on the natural track in Moscow is full of more surprises. As part of the entertainment program, my fashion brand Natalia Gart will be presenting its new collection during this wonderful event. We're doing everything we can to bring more attention to our favorite sport, natural track luge. Yes, it's quite different to the other uh, competitions in Europe, but we like it and the athletes like the big uh, around uh, the competition and the Russian Federation is, is well known to organize all these uh, events around the luge uh, competition and we all like it very, very much. Yeah. Back to the track with the first competition of the second event, which happens on Sunday. It's the same program as before. The men are the first ones to hit the track. Obviously, the more runs for the athletes to do, the better results they show. By this time, the sum of both runs for almost all the leading losers has been less than one minute. Thomas Kammerlander, winner of the first event, is very stable and consistent on the track. He does not perform any fantastic tricks, but demonstrates the solid skills of one of the best in the sport to take the lead. However, the best is yet to come. Patrick Pignetter, the recognized leader who has won countless medals during his extremely successful career, has started to slow down over the last couple of seasons. This year has been just disastrous for him, three fourth places in a row. He starts into his final and decisive run from the second position. He's a bit slower than Camelander in the very beginning, but catches up by the next checkpoint. This is when experience and high class really matter. Patrick Pignetter manages to get ahead of Kamalander by the finish line and finally claims his first medal of the season. The only athlete who can change the final medal count is Alex Gruber. Remember that on the first day he could not handle the pressure and lost the gold to Kamalander. Now's his chance to reclaim it. He knows the curves of the track much better now, but still he is losing his advantage over Pigneta from checkpoint to checkpoint. If the track would be a little bit longer, he would lose the race. However, he manages to cross the finish line 17 hundredths of a second faster than Pigneta. This calls for a dance. His second attempt in Moscow brings him the gold medal. Pignator comes in second and Kamerlander gets the bronze medal. The best Russian loser, Alexander Igorov, cannot get higher than sixth place. In the women's competition, one of the most experienced athletes is back on the ice, Tina Unterberger. For many, many years, she has stayed among the best, but usually gotten second or third. In Moscow, Tina is faster than Greta Pingera, but her final result of 101.46 is not fast enough to compete for the first place.
The final two participants keep the intrigue up. Evelyn Lantaller finishes her first run in second place. She rode nice and clean, but not phenomenally, and Lavrentieva finishes first. It's now between the two of them to decide who will land in first place. This is a good chance for the Russian veteran to win the gold and interrupt Lantaller's winning spree. But the Italian loser literally flies through the track, improving her previous result by nearly half a second. Lavrantieva is physically just unable to perform at this level. She did not have enough time to get in top shape before the season, and she hopes to get much better by the World Championship. This time, she ends up losing to Lantaler, who wins her fourth consecutive gold medal. I trained a lot in summer and now also in winter and yeah, it's, I give all the time I'm past and so I'm very good at this luge. It's very important to drive here very quiet and uh, yeah, so I try it and I won the race. Finally, the doubles hit the ice. The sensational winners of the first day, Stanislav Kovšik and Ilya Tarasov, want to prove very badly that their triumph was not just a matter of luck. But this turns out to be hard to do. They came fourth in the first run, noticeably behind the leaders. Given that the winners are determined by the sum of the two runs, it would be a great success for them to make it onto the podium. The doubles pairs from Russia and from Italy are now competing for the gold. Igorov and Popov were one-tenth of a second behind the Italians after the first run. Basically, it's just a slight touch of a wall, and if their rivals make one mistake, the Russians can hope for gold. Alexander Igorov and Peter Popov improved their time a little bit in the final run, 31.15 seconds versus the previous 31.17. However, just a few minutes later, there are no more doubts left. The Italians completely recover from the previous day's bronze, learn from their mistakes, and give a masterful performance. Patrick Pignetta and Florian Clara are the only pair who managed to fly through Moscow's track in less than 31 seconds, and considering their win in the first run, the final result is more than obvious. Pignetta Clara undisputably gold. Igorov Popov a solid silver, Kovshik Tarasov had the best weekend of their career claiming bronze in addition to the gold they won the day before. The Luge World Cup on natural track in Moscow yet again demonstrated the beauty and unpredictable nature of this sport. The track at Vorbievi Gori proved to be a lucky one, especially for the local athletes. The Russian Lugers took a total of six medals, one gold, four silver and one bronze. The next natural track luge event is a World Cup in Deutschnoff in Italy, and then it's time for the main tournament of the year, the World Championships in Latzfons, Italy.